Kia ora. My name is Boyd, and I'm an engineer. Or, as my oldest daughter puts it, I'm a nerd. Um, I've, built, I've built things ranging from highly scaled applications and the data centers they run into, they run in, to uh, complex developer systems that span the world, to full-on operating systems. And I am not going to bang on about those things. Because you can look it up. Instead, I want to talk about uh, what are the first principles that I operate on and that I try to do my projects in, a little bit about what I'm working on here, and then a little on how we can work together. So let's start with first principles. The first one is build for the future. Every single project where I've purposefully tried to make predictions about world, where the world is going in the time frame and how long I think it's going to take me to build whatever it is I'm doing, it always works. So in other words, if you start a project and it's going to take you two years to do it, don't build something that would be competitive and interesting and relevant now when you start it. Build something that's going to be competitive and interesting and relevant when you finish it. Right? And this means taking some measurements. Let's say you're doing an energy system. Look at the trends and predict what's the cost of energy going to be in two years. If you're thinking computer systems, well, what's the cost of chips going to be in two years? If you're thinking networking, what's the cost of data going to be in two years? And that it changes your designs. And you end up starting something that wouldn't be competitive right now, but you're ahead of everyone else when you get there. Number two, really important. Before you start building stuff, and every engineer gets super excited about things. Engines are cool, and I don't care if it's a mechanical one or a virtual one. You can't start working until you know what problem you're solving. And this is hard. You've got your big problem for your enterprise or whatever. And then each feature, each product, each feature in the product, they've all got to have a problem that you hold in your head as you write it and as you build for it. Um, I, you know, I, when I advise companies and I go in and I say, hey, let's talk about your tech, I always start by just asking questions until I know what problem they're solving. And usually, they learn what problem they're solving in the process. And by the end, they realize, oh, I need maybe 50% or 25% of the tech I actually thought I needed. So understand the problem you're solving before you finish and start, even before you even start building your solutions. Next, every solution you do also creates problems. <laughs> every single one. You have to know what they are. You have to account for them. And the goal is that the problems you create are smaller than the problems you solve. Right? Um, my favorite example from this week has actually been what Samantha was describing with Little Yellow Bird. She's got a clothing company, and she's making uniforms, and she's doing stuff with fabric, and she went and calculated, well, how much carbon am I doing by sourcing from this place? What's the damage I'm doing by getting my dyeing done in that way? Right? She's thinking about her external costs that aren't immediately relative you know, they're not the same as the problem she's solving for her customers, but they matter in the equation. And this part's a little bit of a challenge. On the other hand, I haven't heard a single person who's representing blockchain talk about their costs. I haven't heard anyone talk about the carbon load. I haven't heard any discussion of, if I take an action with a blockchain that causes a ripple effect of other actions, what are those? And which are the ones I'm using and which are the ones I can avoid. That math matters as I figure out if my solutions are overall creating bigger or smaller problems than the ones I'm trying to solve. All right. I also spend an inordinate amount of time thinking about culture. There's cultures that we're born into, there's cultures that we join, and in the corporate world, there's cultures we get to create. And those are kind of fun, right? There's, how often do you get to build a culture that lives beyond you or your time at a place? Um, I like to think that culture is your exit strategy. Now, the point of a culture is that it embodies and it, it reinforces those other first principles, right? And the rituals that you build in your culture, the annual performance review, 
the daily stand-up meeting, how do they relate to your first principles? Are you talking about your external costs? Are you talking about the problems you solve on a regular basis? And this builds momentum within your organization, whether or not you're there, and keeps things going in the right way. So these are my main four first principles, and there's more, but I only have five minutes. So, so what am I doing here? Um, this is my new company. It's Crichton Industries. Spent a lot of time thinking about the name Crichton, and we can have a discussion about that. It's certainly nerdy, and that's kind of on purpose. <laughs> right? It's got a one and zero. That kind of indicates binary, all that stuff. But <laughs> as I was thinking about what impact can I have, and what's the biggest problem I can solve with just who I am, it's, well, it's all your problems. And what are the platforms I can build that helps everyone else solve the problems they're trying to solve? And not everybody. You have to pick and choose. You can't solve every problem. So if you're building a system that assumes there's a device, whether it's on a solar panel, or it's on a tree tracking rodents, or it's up in space, if you're building devices where there isn't a human nearby to reboot it and handle errors and all that, that's the space I'm interested in. So in kind of techno speak, I'm building an operating system aimed at IoT devices. And this, what I'm trying to solve is error recovery. What happens when software things go bad? How fast can you recover? How can you keep critical systems running while, say, a, a sensor is rebooting itself? How do you keep going and layer in a, a put a bunch of security in at the same time? And it's a way deeper discussion than just a minute. <laughs> OK, last thing is how do we work together? I'm exploring my new relationship with New Zealand, and this is how you reach me, and I'd love to talk. <laughs>